Fred Ricciani of TSC. In this interview, we chat with legendary actor Peter Peros about his new film, Who Are You People, available now on demand and in select theaters. Yes, what about me? When I was very young, sometimes I lay in bed at night asking the same old question. Who are you people? Because every moment, they seem to be asking the same question of me. Hey, Mom. You don't even know what this letter means. It is from six months before I was born. Let's just say that this works. Are you sure you don't just, like, want this Carl guy to be your dad? Well, like, everything's just gonna magically make sense? Well, I have to find out. Hello. I'm looking for Carl Hendricks. I'm Alex. Judith's kid. Judith. Look, I'm sorry your mom didn't tell you about me. She didn't tell me about you either. I don't want you sticking around expecting something that's not gonna happen. I mean, having an affair isn't like awesome, but you got me out of it, right? Yeah, I guess we did. But there's other things that happen. Maybe that... I don't need to know. I thought I did, but maybe I don't want to know because I like you now. You have any questions about sex you want to ask me? <laughs> what? From you? Yeah. Ew. Well, Peter, thank you so much for joining us. We just checked out the trailer for Who Are You People? This is a very heart-wrenching yet heartwarming film. How did you get involved with this awesome film? I was invited by Ben Epstein, who's a writer-director. I uh, contacted my agent, got a chance to check out the script and check out uh, his other work and was very impressed. It was his directorial debut, so I knew it would be, uh, uh, well, not even, I didn't know how great it was going to be. I, like, I, it was, I, I thought it was going to be good. I was excited to do, do film, which I haven't done. I really liked the character. I really liked the script and hoped that it would be a really good film and it, and it turned out great. It did turn out great. And a, a lot of times, of course, you know, you take, there are certain things with characters that, you know, maybe are similar to you in real life. And other times you kind of got to bring something to the table, really kind of do that, that whole research and, and build up that character. How similar are you to Reggie in real life? Well, this is, this is interesting because I, I, when we played him, or, or let me say when I played him, we did, different takes different ways. And I think my initial way I thought to play him was less like me. And maybe the way he ended up on screen is a little more like me. So you have to watch the movie to see what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw him a little harder maybe than I am because of just what the, the situation and circumstances and and I think he comes off not as hard as I initially intended to play. And you had great chemistry with the rest of the cast and I, I got to see with what you know, one of the main characters without giving too much away. You know, it's all, it's almost like your character takes pity on him, you know, more right. more than being a hard ass and, and everything. So yeah, that's, that's definitely right. um, a very interesting dynamic. And you did mention you don't get to do a whole lot of films. I mean, sir, you're a legend. You, of course, you've done you know a million things of course you're you're best known for as the world turns uh, as dr ben harris and you didn't work on the own network as well for tyler perry's show so you've been around the block when it comes to tv you've been in the game for a long time but i was shocked to see that you have very few if any feature films on your decorated resume so how many feature films have you actually done up to this point this is my this is my third what i think i i did death before is that right death before dishonor um I, I did with Fred Dwight, which was actually a very good movie. It was a, a military film, but it came out the same year as Platoon, which was more anti kind of military. And this was a little more pro American military. So that that didn't get the recognition. I did Real Genius, which was one of Val Kilmer's uh, early films. Um, that was a long time ago. In, in this, I've done some TV movies. I just finished a, a TV movie that's going to air on VT in May called The Final Say. But in terms of theatrically released movies, I've only done three in 40 years. So it's pretty, it's pretty, some of it because I was, I, I did about uh, 10 years on daytime 
between one life to live and as the world turns and the schedule just doesn't allow it. So, um, so now my, that I'm not doing the daytime thing, hopefully things will happen to, to do more feature, but we'll see, you know, the last few years, everything's gone streaming. So <laughs> that, that's incredible. I mean, you have such a decorated career and to think like you've only done like three feature films total in your career. Is, is it kind of cool that at this age of your career that you're still having like firsts, right? When, when, you, when you've been around yeah. as long as you have, you've seen pretty much everything. So is it is it a new experience or is there a lot more correlation that people think between being a feature film actor and a series regular like you have for most of your career? No, it, it is a, a very different experience. It's, I, I enjoy it. I like the character work. I like this kind of film is... Um, because you're discovering relationship through certain times when you're doing a series, that, especially after it goes several seasons, you're kind of locking in your character and your relationships and you go. And, and this was a very, is a very complex film, very nuanced in the way that it's written and the relationships appear to be something. And then it, there's a shift in it. So I really love this kind of, experience and would hope to do more of it and i feel like it it gave me a a a greater respect for just kind of the independent feature character feature being involved in in something like this is very exciting do you have some time for some kind of random and rapid fire questions related to your career in the film okay let's let's give it a shot Let's, (laughs) let's go besides yourself who's your favorite character and who are you people i love emma's performance so, so I'll, 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 I gotta go with him on this one. Good answer. What would you say was the most awkward moment in filming? Who are you people? From what I understand, it was filmed kind of right before the cutoff with the pandemic and everything. You haven't been involved in a lot of feature films. This is an indie. Things can happen. Was there anything wild and, and wacky on set that you're like, oh, I'm glad we got it the other side of this? Nothing too awkward during filming. Coming back, COVID was just starting, and I was on the plane with the scarf wrapped around my face and people are looking at me like what's the matter with you i'm like y'all don't know what you haven't heard so that was that was before everybody was masking up and vaccinating and all that kind of stuff so that was awkward but on the set there was there was nothing awkward everybody was it was really great great group of people so and, and enjoyed it in fact i had shared the first my first day it was raining and i got to we sat in my patrol car, my sheriff's car with Emma and got to sit and talk with her while we were waiting for the rain to stop. So it was all it was all very good. Devin was very cool, low key. Ben, the director, of course, you know, he's had a, a decorated background as well. You're doing a lot of yeah. uh, you know reality series, music videos. I mean, the list uh, goes on and on. What was it like working with him compared to some of the other directors you've worked with as far as what he brings to the table? He was he was great because he This was a project that was he's been working on for a long time, his directorial debut, a lot of a lot in the script and the characters. So I don't often get character notes or um, get to play a range. Usually we're going so fast, it might be one or two takes and you're moving on where he would come in and say, "Okay, give me this here and. Let's work with you. So we, I have a lot of different, it was great to try a lot of different things and then see what actually made it onto the screen. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he was just a very, I mean, I mean, this is the best way, boyish kind of mm-hmm. Peter Panish energy, just, just very, he was excited about his film. That he, he had the enthusiasm. Film made. So it was great to be a part of that. And it wasn't just, it was my first, film in a long time I, I was telling somebody I was excited about that he was excited it was his first directorial thing so it was just great energy I really enjoyed that love to hear that yeah the energy definitely uh, infectious and hey it, it turned out great so we'll get you out on a high note Peter you've been so gracious with okay. your time why should people watch who are you people people should watch who are you people because it is rare for there to be this kind of character film these days. I think it's got a, a, a good message. It's, it's really kind of could be 
sort of who am I? It's just, there's a self-discovery in it, but it'll get you thinking about people and relationships and stereotypes and what you think, initially think, isn't necessarily what is. And I think it's good to have films that make you think a little deeper about life and relationships. And this film does that.